Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are doing a sort of guide to Epic 7 for like casual players. And you know, we all have those days where we just don't have time to go super hardcore. So it's not necessarily just for like naturally casual people, but also maybe you find yourself one day with just too much to do and not much time to play. So this will sort of go over like efficient methods to getting the most out of your time playing. So like efficiency. So what I always like to start with is the daily quests. These, I think, should be the minimum of what you're doing every day. You get quite a lot of good rewards, 50 sky stones every day, some gold, a bookmark, blah blah blah. First thing I usually do is the covenant summon. You get a free covenant summon every day, that's self-explanatory though, so let's knock over that. Complete dispatch mission. So as far as that's concerned, it's more of a personal thing. If I'm playing at one point and I know that, you know, daily reset resets in like a little under eight hours for me, I'm gonna choose a couple of eight hour quests. So they kind of finish at like the daily quest reset. So I don't really have to think about that anymore for that day and can do whatever I want to pretty much. Sometimes when I log on an hour before reset, I'll just do a couple of one hour dispatch missions. But since we've already done those, we can do like, you know, these four hour ones, I like those. And of course I like to do the same hours for each. So I only have to check back on it once for the two missions. And then of course there is Start Adventure. This includes side stories, so if you just want to go spam five side stories that works as well, which I would recommend since it is limited time if you don't have all the stuff you want from here. Of course you can choose just to go into Adventure as well. And then we have Spirit Altar, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to just auto it, go like two up from the highest you've completed and you shouldn't have any trouble autoing that probably. That's at least my experience. It depends on the team of course. You could potentially auto 10 if you've completed it. It just depends on how your auto team behaves. Hunt is pretty much the same story. Personally, I'm just going on Golem Hunt 8, which is the highest I've completed, but also I can auto it. So that's one example where my team just behaves, I guess, as good as they would if I were controlling them manually. But if you are stretched for time, you can just go to stage one, you know? and do that three times, it's kind of a waste, but if you just need to get rid of the daily quest because you don't have much time or whatever, stage one is perfectly fine as well. And then we have Arena. Personally, I love the NPC challenges. Yes, you don't go up in rank. Yes, you don't get very many tokens. Not as many as compared to Arena, but it's so fast. It's so easy. You can auto them. If you just want to get the daily quest, this is perfectly fine. I'm not sure if you could do that every day, considering the bottom halves have cooldowns of like more than a day. You can see 31 hours here, and I haven't done this guy for a while, so that probably has like a two day cooldown, etc, etc. But you know, when you do have five available, you can complete your daily challenge just like that. Speaking of just being a casual player in general, another thing you could do is set your defense team to one weak hero, like I have done here, to stay low. So if you would prefer to fight real players instead of the NPCs, having a weak defense team will kind of help you keep low and keep finding easy opponents. Also, it helps out everyone else just trying to farm the medals instead of being number one in the world. Raising a penguin in the forest of souls, personally, I get this out of the way immediately. Usually I'll have these dudes done and I'm just gonna summon him straight off the bat. Doesn't really matter. It just kind of screws up my flow because I want three things going at the same time all the time. That's too much micromanagement for me to have the penguin at like 11 hours or what and these at 22 hours. No thanks. Spin the bit of stigma to get that penguin instantly, complete that daily quest, and you know, throw three more of those dudes up there. Easy peasy. We also have this weekly raise phantasma quest. That's pretty self-explanatory. What I always do to raise the mega phantasma is have him in front and take a friend with me. He'll die pretty fast and then the strong friend will come and you'll have basically a full team anyway. That was more a tip for the reach level 30 with the mega phantasma. The one we just completed was raise phantasma in the forest of souls, which we just did as you saw. So those are all the daily quests. Uh, all said and done, it probably won't take you more than 20 to 30 minutes if you're like really efficient with them. Like if you're not doing the hard hardest stuff possible. Spirit Altar, Arena, and Hunt are probably going to be the longest things. Hunt, in my case, is always the longest by far because I'm going for a stage 8 golem. I can auto it, but it takes like, you know, 15 minutes per hunt. Although during that 15 minutes, I can do whatever else I want to. But if you're playing on like a phone or so, and you can't really multitask, unless you can just set your phone down and do something else, then that's cool as well. But like, but like I said, doing stage one, if you just want to get through the hunt and not really bother with it, then that's perfectly fine. We're talking about time efficiency, not energy efficiency here. So besides daily quests, there are only two other like responsibilities with quotes. <laughs> Uh, in the game, and that's Abyss and Labyrinth. And these are kind of your responsibilities because you get three Abyss entries, Abyss guide 
uh, German double S, whatever that's supposed to mean. Regardless, you get entries into Abyss and Labyrinth every day. Three for Abyss and one for Labyrinth. So if you're a naturally casual player and you've tried Floor 58 like sometime in the last week with just whatever team you got, then you can just do Purify three times and get the gold in Stigma. And that's pretty much all you need to do at Abyss. Of course, if you're feeling adventurous one day, you know, you can go in here you know, check the enemies, see see exactly what they're doing, try and think about a team composition for it, raise them, do all that good stuff, etc, etc. But for me, I don't think I'll be able to beat Floor 58 today. I think for Floor 58, I would need another healer or someone else that can protect me a little bit more because those AoE exploding mushrooms, man. And then we get to Labyrinth. Before reset, I had three cubes and raid was closed due to the weekly reset thing. So what I did is just go into th this one, Zone 3, and Labyrinth is also very audible nowadays. You do still have to select the direction when they get to a crossroad, but the cool thing about Labyrinth now is that when you die, because you didn't realize you're at negative, you know, 40 morale or whatever, you can for free go back to the point before you died, and then you know you could warp to the exit portal and get out of there. Same thing with Raid as a matter of fact. The minions are way, way easier than the actual boss, so I have absolutely no problem autoing all the way to a boss. Again though, you have to select the direction, so this would be more of a thing that's off to the side, and when you notice you're at a crossroads, you just tap the direction you want to go in. Of course, elite monsters and bosses, you can't really auto those unless you're super stupid strong. So those are pretty much all the things that if you don't do daily, then you're kind of missing out on, you know, your entries to Abyss or your purification rewards, your labyrinth entry and those labyrinth tokens to buy charms and such. There are also challenges periodically. The goblin challenge gives you like, I think 50k gold. I don't really bother with that too often. It is easy and it is fast. It just slips my mind so often because 50k gold doesn't really do much, but um, you know, you could do it as well. Excuse me. I wouldn't blame you for not. I skip it most days. We also typically have some limited stuff. We have this guy currently, a five star free hero. I'm probably gonna try and farm him a little bit before he ends because, you know, his skills for me don't sound super interesting, kind of niche, but still it's a free five star hero. So, you know, it does cost quite a lot of stamina. 60 for epic hell, which I don't think I can even do. Also, of course we have guild. Guild duties are very simple, very easy. I just go through the tabs, this takes like two minutes. You know, guild hall, check in, daily reward, blah, blah, blah. Aid, see if you want to give anything to anyone. You know, we can spare a greater life rune, spare some dark runes. I don't really like giving out catalysts because they're super hard, but, um, you know, most of this stuff, like if I have 10 catalysts, I'll go ahead and give them one, especially because I don't think I need those right now for anyone. And if I did, then, you know, I can go farm them. But runes, they're usually no problem. Donate your 50k gold, donate any proof of courage as you may have, I only have one currently. And when the week resets, you know, you got the Morlagora seed, cool, cool, you know, you can buy whatever you want to there. I usually go for everything, I just don't want to go for the Labyrinth Compass right now because I'm at max already. Captain Shop, if you're the leader or a vice leader, you should buy those every six hours. We have like 30 million gold right now, so. And we also got weekly guild missions, half of which will be completed just by doing your daily quests. In this case, it's Hunt, Spirit, Altar, and Labyrinth. Those should all get completed just naturally playing. And then Bell My Slime and Wild Animals, those are things you'll probably have to farm unless you're doing a ton of normal adventures, which I'm not. So usually like on Sunday, I'll realize, oh crap, I have to do all those, but they don't take too long. And also you can get your five adventures done in that time as well. Now we can talk a bit about raising your heroes, like getting your first six stars and such, cause this doesn't have much to do with being casual, but it is still possible to do while being casual. You basically only want to focus on the Mega Phantasmas take your two stars and promote them with the two star monsters you find in adventure and get them to three star. And whenever you're doing some easier content, just throw them up front, have the friend replace it when you're doing adventure or side story or whatever. And uh, you'll just naturally raise a bunch of these dudes to level 30 over time. And then you could use them themselves to promote. You really could just do this with only Phantasma. If you want to make it a bit faster, of course, although this kind of gets out of the casual territory. You could race two star monsters you find as well and use them instead of Phantasma or alongside Phantasma. But for the sake of being casual, if you just use Phantasma, you will get there eventually and it will be a bit easier, just not quite as fast because 
Phantasma are a bit in limited supply, especially how fast you get them. You can summon them directly using Stigma, but eventually you will run out of Stigma. As far as Hunt is concerned, I wouldn't focus on it too much until we get the update where accessories can drop. That should be happening actually pretty soon by the end of the month, I think. And then you might want to start focusing more on trying to get better teams to clear stage 10 and maybe even stage 11 of Hunt. But I'm not going to be getting into team compositions for each of these and such. That would take way too long. But if you're in need for gear right now and you have some extra gold, you can check the uh, shop every now and then check for some 85 level stuff i made a whole video on Goodbye. shop refreshes actually later. but yeah it's not cheap so the question is now once you've done all your like daily responsibilities you know gold daily quests abyss and labyrinth what do you do then? Well, if you want to be super casual, you can stop there. But if not, I would recommend always having a goal in mind. For me, for the past days, that was getting Falconer Clury's skill tree maxed, or maybe not maxed, but higher. I have currently five max runes and two plus one runes. I think I have the most important ones, pretty much. Maybe that would be good. This is the one I'm focusing on next. We can actually do that one real quick. And actually the next one. Cool, cool. So that's maxed. And I think besides that... I don't really like maybe the speed I would get, but it's getting kind of expensive for that. You know, you're basically spamming spirit altar on the days where the green one is open. Do the highest you can auto, which in my case is like stage eight. Stage nine is like 50 50 clear or not. So plus, as far as those skill trees are concerned, you do typically need way more of the mid runes than the epic runes. So doing a slightly lower stage may not be bad anyway. Besides that, spamming the side story, autoing that is never a bad idea. Even if you would have all the things you can buy, you can still buy an unlimited amount of gold, which, you know, isn't a lot. That's like 2,500 extra gold per final stage. So if you have other priorities, it might be better to go for those, but it's still decent if you don't know what to do. Of course, if your goal is to get your next six star, then you should rather spamming adventure or side mission stories also helps you get six star heroes faster because you can always bring a Phantasma in front because you can bring friends, whereas you can't bring friends in somewhere like Hunt or Spirit Altar. But yeah, I think that'll pretty much do it for the casual guide to Epic 7. In summary, do your daily quests, Abyss, Labyrinth, Guild stuff, and spend all your excess energy in the goal you're trying to achieve. If you don't have any goals, well, in my opinion, that's a problem and you need to get yourself one. And the easiest way to do that is to think about which piece of content you're struggling the most with and the piece of content you want to be better in the most. So if you do like Arena, but your team just sucks, do a bit of research, find the best arena units, see if you have access to them, and raise them. Same with Abyss or Labyrinth, and yeah, you can do a lot of those things at the same time. But make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Leaving a like if you did happen to enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.